Hello guys, my name is Golan. Today we are going to talk about those inverters. I'm going to show you how to connect them to work in parallel in single phase. Let's start! So as you can see, I've already set them up, but I'm going to show you how to connect them together. So, this one will be my host. This one will be my slave 1 and slave 2. So in order to connect them, let me show you. We are going to use those small connectors first. So from the host, you first you need to connect uh, the host from the left port to the slave one to the left port and from the right port from the slave one it's going to the left port on the slave two remember first port on the host first port on the slave from the second port is going to the first port to the slave two and then from slave two the right port is going to the uh, host the right port so for the serial connectors, I'm going to show you a graph from the manual. It's going from the first, the left port from the host to the second port, the first to the first slave, and then from the first port, the left port on the first slave, it's going to the right port of the slave two, and then from the left port in slave two, it is going to the second port, the right port, on the host. And that's it, you basically connected them. Now, in order to use those inverters in parallel, you will need batteries. You cannot use them without batteries. You can use them as in three phase, so each inverter is in a different phase, without batteries. But if you are going to use them in parallel for single phase, you need batteries. We are going to change those cables because they are kind of short. So this break box that I made is for six strings. Currently I have three strings for the three inverters. That's why I have a lot of room here because my plan is to uh, place another three inverters down here. So this row over here is the one that I'm using cur currently. Those six slots in here, over here, are for the first string, the second string, and the third string. Okay guys, so it's time to change those cables and I will show you how to make them and connect them together. First, we need to take off the caps from, from those inverters. Okay, so now we have the three inverters opened and what we will need to do is to unscrew the cables. So, we are finished. All of the cables are out. The cable that I'm using is thick, uh, I think a 35 mil. The recommended I think is 25, but why not? So before we continue, 
we have to measure one another row in here with those inverters and then the bus bars will be around over here somewhere but first we have to measure get a tape measure we have like 60 centimeters from the top to the bottom okay 60 let's make it 70 I need like 10 centimeters in here 70 over here um, 70 over here nope again made a mistake and 70 right over here okay so those three dots will be our bottom from the inverters over here so now let's measure our batteries give me a second so I think I'm gonna put my batteries on a pallet just in case I don't like them to be on the ground so my pallet is like 15 centimeters and my tallest battery is uh, 75 centimeters so this means that I have 90 centimeters from the ground which is exactly here it's actually one centimeter over the marked dot <sighs> so what we are going to do now I'm going to cut another five centimeters over here so instead of 70 it will be 65 let's try with 65 Okay. So the higher dot is 65 centimeters. Let's do the same in here. And in here. Okay. Before we continue, I want to move the pallet over here with one battery and think how I'm going to place the bus bars. And now with the power of movie making, I move all of the batteries. You can barely see them, those three in here are a little shorter than the other ones so we can place the bus bars over here and here or we can make them the first one here and the second one over here let's see okay so I moved the camera a little lower so you can see the batteries over here and let's try to figure out how to place the bus bars let me get them so i got my bus bars those bus bars are rated for 600 amps so let's measure and mount them i'm thinking to put them over here so let's measure and mark okay now let's make the holes okay so I moved the camera so you can see closer what I'm doing here let's put those inside
good enough. Okay. Now, let's mount them. So the red one will be over here. Perfect. Let's do the other one. Okay, so when you are mounting them, you can use a level spirit, but I just decided to all eyeball it so. This one is a little bit lower than the other one, but I don't care. Okay, let's start measuring the cables. Okay, so I have the old cables right here. So I'm gonna measure them and see if I can reuse some. I think the longest one is right here, so. This will probably work. Let's see. Yep, this cable we can reuse. So I'm gonna leave it right here and check the black ones. So here I have the black ones. Let's check if we can, we can reuse some of them. Yes, definitely we can reuse this one. So we need to make cables for only those two inverters. Let me bring the cables and we can measure and cut them. Okay, here I have the 35 mil the red cable. Let's start measuring. Now, because I don't have bigger cutters, I have to use those. Don't do this, go buy bigger cutters. Yep. Let me show you why you should not do this. So, if you can see it, come on camera. You see, it's not good, but we'll use that. So next, you need one of those. I'm not sure how it's called in English, but in Bulgaria we call them boots. So I'm gonna call it boot, cable boot. Okay. I need a knife. 
What you need to do, let me move the camera up. Like that. What you need to do is get a knife, measure, and cut the cable. Something like that. And when you cut it, be careful not to cut your fingers. And don't bend it too much because we need the boot to be easy to be bent. So pull, card, and that's the cable over here. Will it focus? Yeah, this is the cable. Let's try to put that cable in with all the mess that we did. It will be hard because when you cut it, it should stay straight. But yeah, not with small cutters. And now we are trying. Is it going to focus? Probably. We're trying to put this. I need to remove my gloves. Because I cannot feel it going in. That's what she said. Okay. Okay, I'll be right back when I put it in. And yes, when I turn off the camera, immediately. So you guys are making me nervous. <laughs> okay, it's in. Move the light. <sighs> you see? Good. Now, oh, I need a shrink wrap. <laughs> so I have two pieces. One is this one, heat shrinkable something, tubing, and the other one is this one. And I think I'm gonna use the black one because this is a yellow one. So let's cut that. But before we are going to cut, I'm gonna need my glove back. We are measuring like this, kind of like this, something like this. Okay. And cut. Come on. Okay. Good. Now, before we do that, we need to smash the cable inside here. So, let me move my camera down so that you can see what I'm doing. Yeah, no, it's a mess. Okay. We are going to use hydraulic crimping tool, I guess. It's in German, I think. So let's get this one out. This is 425. Why? out and 
get the 35. Oops, it's slippery. 135 in, the second 35 in. Okay, now we get the cable, put it inside. Is it closed? It should be. Ah, oh, yeah, it's moving. The hard part in here is to keep the cable inside without going out. Okay, we got it. Now we just need to squeeze. Squeeze, squeeze, I'm going out focus, it hurt, it's hurt, and I think we are good. Yep. Okay, let's open that and check. Perfect. So now we can use our shrinking tube. But in order to use it, I need my heat gun. this uh, let me try to zoom in a little bit okay that's better so now we are going to shrink it right over here on the top like this Perfect. It is perfect. Okay. So this one was, what is that? 10 mil? 10. Okay, so let me show you. The, the, the inverters have a 6 mil, I think, bolt and this one, this one is 10 mil, 10 mil. That's why on the other end we are going to use this boot. Okay, let's do the same for the other end and we will be back. I'll be back when I'm ready. Okay, so we have the cable ready. This one is going, this end is going to the uh, bus bar and this end is going to the inverter. Because, as I said, 
the one the this one is bigger than this one this one is actually for 8 mil but it, it is going to work so let's lace it so something like this before we continue with the other cables I'm gonna put the cable canals Actually, I think I need only one over here to somewhere over here, I guess. Let me go get it and measure and put it. I'll be right back. Okay, so I finished the cables. All of the three inverters have the cables connected, but not tightened yet. I did tighten the uh, part that is connected to the inverter so we can close the inverters now and we can place the lid on the top channel in here and then I'm gonna do the uh, top for the that channel and this one and try to connect the batteries okay let's close the lids first okay so now we have to cut the lids for those two channels. Let's do it. Okay, so I've placed the lids and I made two for over here. Those two. Now let's connect the batteries. So the idea here is that I need three more batteries so I can have a total of ten and I will have six inverters 10 batteries so 16 so for each slot that I have on the bus bar I need to connect two devices I will connect two of the batteries in the first slot uh, let me show you so Two of the batteries will be connected to the first slot. If you notice over here, the third slot is empty. That's because the when I install the next inverters, they will be over here, here, and here. I'm trying to make the inverters to be spread out as evenly as I can. So, the first two batteries will be here and probably over here when I get the last three batteries I will connect two of them over here so in the middle slots the six will be connected inverter and battery first will be inverter then the battery on top of it same thing on the other side okay let's continue make sure to tighten them well because when there is a big load the connectors might, be, might get hot and when the metal is getting hot and cold it expands and collapses so it might get loose so make sure you tight them well so now all of the batteries are connected to the bus bars now let's connect them together for communication so those are my batteries I got seven of them. So the first one will be the master, then the second, third, fourth, fifth, then this will be the next one, the sixth, and then the seventh. This will be the last the last one. So how we are doing this? We are getting the first first connected. Then to the second one over here. So in order to make your mastery, uh, the master battery, you will need to change those pins over here. I'm not sure if you can see them. So I have seven batteries, and I need to 
put to on the sixth and the seventh. And this will make my master battery to look for seven batteries. Okay, let's continue. <laughs> let's get the cables. And first port. I don't think the port matters here. But let's let's do it right. I think not all of the batteries are like mine. So the first battery from the second port need to go from the second RS485. To the first and then from the second here to the first here I need more cables oh I have one here okay the second port first of this battery so if you notice on this battery the second port is on this side and on this battery the second the first port is on this on the same side that's because the battery is like turned okay uh, more cables So from the second port here, we are going to the first, the first here, and then I need two more cables. Okay, we got them here. From the second port. First, and then again, the second to the first. Now, all of the batteries are connected. I'm gonna fix that mess shortly. We have to connect the first battery from this port over here. It says CAN RS485. We have to connect it to our main inverter, which will be the right one. Is it? Yes, it's the right one. Not sure if you can see it. No, we probably won't see it. So this inverter here that I have, it's newer from those two because it has a CAN port actually no, it has a RS485 port for communication and a BMS the other two have CAN and RS485 it doesn't have, they don't have BMS port and this means that this inverter, what is it? This inverter can communicate with the other two without the battery RS485 whatever hub. So I only need to connect the, my master battery to that inverter, that inverter, <laughs> and it will tell the other inverters that the state of the battery and everything else so do you see it right here it says give me a second yeah right here it says bms and rs485 that's the difference between the old ones and the new ones the new one will say BMS 
Let me show you the other, the old ones. You see, this is, come on, focus. Yeah, it says can and air is 485. That's the difference. And we are connecting the cable to the BMS port in here. Okay, let's try to fire it up and see what happens. Okay, the batteries are on. We have 95% on the first one and then 96 on the last one. Okay. Let's see. Nothing here, nothing here, nothing here. Let's turn them on. Host, first slave, second slave. But we don't have any power. Why is that? Why is that? Uh, zero volts. Okay, so the system is working. Everything seems to be working. So that's it for today, guys. Today we've learned how to connect three inverters working in parallel in single phase with seven batteries. If you have some suggestions or comments, please leave them down below. If you like the video, you know what to do. If you want to see more videos like this, consider subscribing. Thank you again and see you in the next time. Golden out.